Hi, my name is Tim Shipley and I'm a sales engineer at Balif. Today, I will be overviewing the standard automation sensors demo. Today's countertop shows four different portfolios of sensors. The first being photoelectric sensors located on the left. The second is capacitive sensors located on the back right. The third is magnetic field sensors located on the pneumatic cylinder. And the fourth is inductive proximity sensors located on the front right. All of these sensors are actually readily available in high quantities with short lead times. These are great for manufacturers looking for ease of use and quick installation. All of these sensors come in different form factors as well to fit your specific application's needs. To begin, let's take a look at the self-contained Balif through beam fork sensor. These can range in widths of 5 millimeters to 220 millimeters. They are self-contained, meaning that the emitter and receiver is located in this one robust housing. This can provide a few benefits, and the first being it only requires one electrical connection. That can also lead to reduced customer expense by reducing the setup procedure time. When it comes to accuracy, small part detection, and detail detection, as well as operating reliability, Balif fork sensors are top of the line. As well, like I said, they do operate on a light beam emitted and received. So as a part passes through that light beam, it will trigger the orange output light located near the electrical connection. Next, to the right, we have Balif angled sensors. These are also self-contained through beam angle sensors, which are very similar to the fork sensors we just spoke about. However, their form factor is a little different. They are more open, allowing parts to enter from relatively every angle. These are great for small, tight spaces and tight applications. They do operate on the same concept of a light beam being emitted and received in the same one housing. So as a part passes through and covers up a li that light beam, it will trigger that light by the electrical connection. In the front corner of this demo here, you can see an assortment of photoelectric sensors, both diffuse and retroreflective. Photoelectric sensors are designed to detect distance, absence, and presence of an object by using a light beam and a photoelectric receiver. First, I want to discuss retroreflective photoelectric sensors. This is a retroreflective sensor, and as you can see, it relies on a reflector to reflect the light beam back to its receiver. This light barrier detects objects regardless of surface and material. As my hand passes through that light beam, you will see it trigger the sensor output light. Diffuse sensors are ideal for detecting the differences in contrasts. They detect objects depending on their surface and material by the light beam reflecting off the object back to the receiver, back to the receiver in the sensor. So this little guy here uses an infrared light beam which is invisible to the human eye, but as you can see, its small form factor also makes it great for tight spaces and tight applications. But as I stick my hand in front of that sensor, in front of that light beam, it will trigger that output light on top of the housing. Next, this is also a diffuse sensor right here, but it operates using a LED red light beam, and so that makes it highly visible, which is a benefit during alignment and allows for quick installation this photoelectric sensor uses a high precision laser light, and so that's ideal for detecting differences in contrast of small parts. The last diffuse photo eye is a diffuse sensor with background suppression. So it works similar to other diffuse sensors, but, the detect, but it can also detect objects with a teachable switching distance using what's called a potentiometer, which is located on top of the housing, and which is, that is also adjustable. So background suppression provides reliable object detection regardless of surface or material as well. Diffuse sensors overall are cost effective and easy to mount in a line because the emitter and receiver are housed together in a single unit. And because of their highly visible light beams, they make for quick installation and easy setup. Located on the back right here is our level detection demo. And this has two capacitive sensors located on the front, one on the top and one on the bottom. As you can see, as the water reaches the bottom, that sensor can actually see through that plastic tank, detect that water level, and then tell that pump to start filling it up. 
Same goes for the top. As it reaches the top, it will tell that pump to start draining the water. So as we can see, these are providing discrete high-low feedback to the pump, telling it when to fill and when to drain. And it's really interesting that capacitive sensors are able to see through non-metallic tanks. And it is important to note that they must be non-metallic. Um, they can see through plastic tanks and glass tanks up to a range of four millimeters. Although they may look a little similar, what is different about these is that the top capacitive sensor is what is known as a smart level sensor. And so that hybrid capability allows that to operate accurately if the media within the tank does have foam or cause condensation within the tank. The standard capacitive sensor on the bottom could potentially provide a false reading if the media within the tank causes foam or condensation. Shown here is a short stroke cylinder demoing Balaf's magnetic field sensor. Magnetic field sensors detect piston position through the cylinder wall of a pneumatic cylinder. These magnetic field sensors are designed for a C-slot cylinder, but they're also available in T-slot form factors. What's great about them is they mount flush with the cylinder, making them great for space critical applications. Since all C-slot sensors can be inserted from above, they will also fit where the slot ends are closed off from the sides. Balif's magnetic field sensors features up to eight teachable switching points. And as you can see, when I pull back the piston, it'll trigger that, that output light on the, one, on the one switch at the beginning, and then it'll do the same for the second switch at the end. Displayed here is a variety of ballast inductive proximity sensors, but this is just a fraction of our overall portfolio. Inductive sensors are used for non-contact detection of metal. And as I move this metal pen in front of each sensor head, you will notice the sensor will trigger the orange output lights on the sides of each inductive proximity sensor. You'll find these sensors detecting parts in a lot of harsh manufacturing environments because they're extremely durable. They're resistant to vibration, water, oil, and all non-metallic particles, making them extremely reliable. Inductive proximity sensors can be mounted flush, quasi-flush, or non-flush. Everything represented here is non-flush, and it is important to, to note that non-flush inductive sensors do provide the longest sensing ranges, However, they need a clear zone when mounting. Flush mounting inductive proximity sensors have a shorter operating di distance, but they can be mounted in congested applications with without false triggering. This has been a demonstration of Balif's standard automation sensors demo. Please visit our website, www.balif.com, for more information and a bigger overall view of our product portfolio.